Ozark Trail, 12 person instant cabin tent. This is part two. This will be the interior review. Part one is the exterior review, just a brief review. And I once again want to emphasize the importance of sealing all of the exterior seams. I had numerous leaks the first time out. First thing you'll notice on the inside is I have the two by two foam anti-fatigue mats that I purchased at Harbor Freight. They're all alphanumeric because they need to go in the exact same place every time. It covers the entire floor. It makes it a lot nicer than walking around on the slippery surface of the tent floor itself. It has to go into a shape of a point here in the center because the base of the tent itself is in the shape of a Y. So the entryway, I just have a small kitchen setup that I made out of PVC and some scrap pieces of lumber. This is all scrap stuff, so it didn't cost me much of anything other than a few screws. And it works out nice inside. The only thing I do inside is make my coffee and boil water. That's about it. Once in a while, I'll heat up some soup. All of my other cooking is done outside. So the first portion, the entryway here, has these large panels that you can unzip on each side as well as the entrance doors which makes it essentially a screened in area which is nice when it's warm out and you want a nice breeze in the summertime it makes it real nice one of the problems I ran into the first time out I had some cool nights and this time out some very cool nights down in the low 40s and breezy the top of these are all open all the way along here so what is that about four feet maybe five feet long there that is just an open flap so when the wind blows it virtually opens up what i've done is i've added some velcro strips to make it a little bit more secure there's still opening there but it makes it a little bit more secure that it doesn't blow open all the way so all of the uh, panels that unzip on the windows which there are a number of them had the same problem they have zippers all along the side but then in the top they're all open which made it very drafty when it's breezy so i put velcro strips on each one of the panels something else that i added is in the ceiling because the ceiling is all screen and the fly on this tent is on the exterior of the poles and so it creates a large gap and there is a lot of airflow there which again in the summer when it's warm it's very nice when it's chilly and damp, uh, raining, and the wind is blowing, it is as breezy inside as it is outside. So what I've done is I've taken some old tent flies and I've just thrown them up over the top to kind of cut down on some of the some of the draft, and that made a huge difference this time out. As I mentioned earlier, we had some nights down in the mid to low 40s, and that got pretty breezy. So this made it nice to control the draft. This tent is difficult for one person to put up. It's possible, but difficult. So what I started using is these uh, light stands, these collapsible light stands, and it extends a little bit further than that. I put a foam pad on the top of it, and when I'm putting it up, it helps hold the two, two of the hubs up while I get the center and the third one up, and it makes it a lot easier to put this tent up. Some of the places that leaked for me, I mentioned the first time out I had a lot of rain, um, had a lot, a lot more rain this trip. No, no leaks. One of the places that leaked, uh, actually three of these panels that they have these storage things sewn into the side. It seems that it weeps into where all the extra stitching is. It would run down the side and drip onto the floor. So there are, let's see, one, two, three, four, five. I think there's six of these different size in different places. And three of the six uh, had leaks. It would, it would weep through. And so this trip out, now that I sealed all the exterior seams, there are no leaks. Another place that it leaked where these loops are sewn in, pardon the poor video here, where these loops are sewn in that you can roll down the screen and then uh, attach it rolled up. That was another place where it literally was just weeping down. So you can see the outside one and the inside one, all that extra stitching there. It was just opportunity for rain to get in, and it did. Uh, this was one of the places that it, it leaked a good bit. Also, the front corners at the front door here, this corner, and then the opposite corner at the front entryway, that one leaked as well. And I believe that was from the runoff from the fly, which I alleviated that problem by, as I showed in the first part of the video, instead of attaching the fly to the loop that it's designed for, I actually have it 
attach down to the tent stake, which keeps the rain uh, weeping down this, this line here to the ground rather than spilling onto the tent right at the corner, which is where I had a lot of leaking. All right, and then over here by my cot area, this was another place that leaked, one of these pouches here. This one leaked, and I didn't find out until my cot was a lot closer to that And at that time, and my sleeping bag and the cot were uh, pretty well soaked, about two foot square there. Um, so no leaks this time because I, I sealed it all up. Uh, over on this side, I have my power set up. I have a small jackery that I'm able to run some LED lights and also have a homemade battery bank. So I have my solar panels coming into this. Then off of this homemade battery bank, I can do my jackery, keep it charged up, keep my um, laptop charged up, my cell phone. I think I have a total of uh, seven USB ports, plus the jackery has an AC outlet. And I have a number. I still haven't, haven't finished uh, working out a, a good design for this, but I have LED light strips uh, one in each of the sections of the Y, so um, I can turn on just one section or all three if I want. And then I have a center light, which is just a selfie ring light, and it works out well. So then the other thing that I have on this side is just a little bit of a workstation and small DVD player. I had 30, about 36 to 38 hours of rain this trip, and so uh, it was nice having the DVD player along. And watch a couple of movies and uh, kind of break up the monotony of being kept inside for that long. So all in all, this is a very good tent. I, uh, I really like it. I wish they would have d uh, done a better job of sealing the seams up and uh, on the inside as well as the outside. I also wish that on these larger panels, they just would have run a zipper across those. It wouldn't have to be all of them, but just in particular, the, the larger ones, it would make it a lot nicer to control the draft. And I do wish there was some way that was built in to control the draft uh, from the large screen ceiling area. It's nice in the summertime. You get a lot of breeze. That helps out. But in the wintertime or when it's damp and chilly out and the wind's blowing, uh, it can get really drafty inside. Um, I do use um, a Mr. Heater Little Buddy, and it works out well. I rarely ever turn it above low. It has low and high setting. And, of course, I have um, the heat-generated fan that runs here once it gets up to the right temperature. I did make a little surface on top that I can also put a pot, make, uh, make a can of soup if I need to, or heat some water, but then also I can just keep my, my fan on there. It slides in, won't get bumped off. I have it secured to a base and keep my extra propane away from the, the heater itself and also the uh, fire extinguisher is close by. So that's pretty much about it for, for my tent setup. And uh, if you have any questions or anything, put them in the comments below. I'll try to get, get back to you. Uh, it provides lots of room. I camp by myself, so this is plenty of room for me. And uh, enjoy it. So once again, the couple, the couple cautions if you purchase this tent is seal the seams right away. Before you ever use it, seal the seams. It leaked. I had at least nine leaks. Um, first trip out, 16 hours of rain, pretty much straight through. And uh, I had nine different leaks. I was sopping it up and everything else. Uh, this time, no leaks. And so I'd encourage you to seal the seams. That's the most important thing, especially the fly. And then around the base where the tub, um, the tub liner is, the, the base comes up to the wall. Very, very important to get that sealed or you're going to have some leaks.